Good morning and please be seated. Bonjour and welcome to our fall convocation of 2022, a great day of celebration. And I'm very pleased to welcome all of you who are here in the room this morning and also those who are watching online. We're glad to have you all with us. Parents, family members, and friends of the graduands, welcome. We are pleased that you are here and we invite you this morning to sit back and enjoy this moment as we celebrate with those here in the front seats who have achieved this great milestone in their lives. The proceedings for today's ceremony will proceed unannounced uh, as they are presented in your convocation program. So I now declare convocation to be open and I invite Dr. Greg Jones to lead us in prayer as we begin this morning. Just before I do lead in prayer, I'll just say it's a great privilege to participate to, and to uh, have the privilege to represent the more than 400 churches that make up what's called the Canadian Baptists of Atlantic Canada, who founded this institution in 1948 and who continue to be greatly vested in it and uh, believe it's an important part of their shared ministry together. And I just want to even now say congratulations to each of the gra graduands. So let's bow in prayer, please. Lord God, we gather here this morning recognizing that you are creator, redeemer, sustainer of all, the author of all good, the source of all truth, the architect of genuine life and beauty. We are here at this intersection of past and future, honoring and celebrating accomplishment while looking ahead to new opportunities, continued growth, and yet to be realized blessings for society and our world. May this ceremony, in essence, be a prayer that these graduands may faithfully steward the scholarly gifts which you have apportioned for service to you and our wider world. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you for the provision of this school, its supporters, uh, administration, faculty, and staff that make quality learning possible. We also are thankful for these soon-to-be graduates, their families and friends, who invested of themselves here and who have blessed and enriched this community of learning and living. May each of us fully understand that in the broadening of our learning, we also have a responsibility to widen our gaze and hearts toward the world you love. We pray these things in and through the one who is the true revelation of you, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The university scripture is Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. Christ is the visible image of invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on the earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as throne, kingdoms, rulers, and authority in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all the creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning supreme over all who rise from the dead, so he is the first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on the earth, by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies separated from him, your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now you have reconciled yourself to him through the death of the Christ in this physical body. As a result, he has brought you into your, his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. 
But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world and I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. On behalf of the Board of Governors of Crandall University, I'd like to first of all congratulate you, the graduates, on accomplishing um, the accomplishment you are being recognized for today. Thank you for choosing Crandall, and I'm confident that this has been a good experience for you. I remember with excitement, the excitement I felt on each of my convocations, and I always like to see that blue because my uh, degrees are in education and I always like to see that part of it. Um, I'm sure you're feeling that same kind of excitement today. Hard work has resulted in one of your goals or dreams being achieved. So as you leave today, I just have a couple things to tell you. Celebrate this accomplishment. For those of you who are already in your chosen career, May this degree lead to further advancement and recognition in your workplace. For those of you who are seeking employment, I pray that this degree would open the door to your dream position. Remember, though, this is not the end of your learning. This is simply another step in this lifelong journey you're on of learning. My prayer for you today comes from Psalm 20 and verse 4. May he grant you your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. In a moment, I'm going to ask our Leadership Award recipient to join me here and uh, receive his award from Dr. Olhauser. But I'd like to say a few words about Dr. Bill Morrison. I'm not going to repeat what's in your program because you can read that and you can see that he's a very distinguished individual and worthy of recognition today. But I'd like to uh, introduce Dr. Morrison by saying just a few personal words. The first is this, if you can, I'd like for your uh, I'd like you to take the ability to allow your mind to wander back to 1950. And I'm suspecting there weren't a lot in the room that were alive in 1950. But in 1950, Bill's parents, Earl and Millie Morrison, came to a brand new school to contribute to its growth and development. And they invested themselves for over a decade in building up a music program at the forerunner to Crandall University. And they trained the students, they contributed to student life, they formed a choir, they formed other singing groups, and they sang all over the Maritimes. And students grew through that experience. And for years, we have appreciated the legacy of Bill's parents. So in a very real today, very real way today, when we honor their son, we also honor Earl and Millie. The second thing I would say is that as a very young faculty member, part-time, uh, long ago, my office was located across from Dr. Morrison's office. And he has uh, just a few years on me. I think we both have a little gray, but he does have a few years on me. And I will say, as a young man trying to find his way as a young academic, learning how to teach and learning how to do the other things that a professor would do, Bill was an encouragement to me and an example to me. And one time he rescued me from my office when my students tied a hockey stick across my door frame so that I couldn't get out to teach my Greek class. But Bill rescued me and untied uh, the ropes so I could get out and teach my class once I found them. They were hiding. Anyway, I appreciated Bill's role there. And the other thing I would say is this. There are all sorts of things we could have occupied uh, our time with this morning in terms of talking about why, why Bill is a deserving person. Uh, his curriculum vitae is about 120 pages long. So he's had his hand in all sorts of things. But what we recognize him for this morning is not that he taught at Crandall for years, not that he helped launch the, the uh, Bachelor of Education program here, but it's his investment in the social fabric of the province of New Brunswick and beyond through his work in mental health 
especially uh, working to improve the mental health of younger people in our society and our culture. It has reached, the concerns have reached epidemic proportions, but Dr. Morrison's investment of his research, his time, his teaching, his organizational ability toward that goal is worthy of significant note. So, Mr. Provost and VP of Academic Affairs, uh, on our behalf, would you appreciate uh, Dr. Morrison and recognize him with this presentation this morning. I said, good morning. This is your day. <laughs> Exciting. It's great to see the smiles, eh? the accomplishments of all that you've done. You know, A lot of history has led up to this point in time, and uh, now this is the day, a, a great milestone. But there's more to come. This is only the beginning uh, as you go. And when I was asked to share today, and, um, and it really is a great honor to be here. When I walked through these halls, in fact, I, when I was with Bruce and, and the other folks, John in the, uh, in the, board, in the boardroom there, the president's uh, boardroom, it was like, uh, it, it like ghosts kind of came out of the walls because it goes back many years. Uh, I was, uh, my parents were here in the 1950s and, and taught as instructors, and, and uh, I was actually born in 1961, that tells you how old I am. And, uh, and I remember being looked after by students. Uh, they were my babysitters as classes went on. The baby was passed around from one to the other in those early days. So I certainly have, and then back here as an instructor and then on to UNB. Uh, so it is just a pleasure to be here to see, to see such an amazing fall convocation. There were times, I believe, when fall convocation was, was probably canceled because there wasn't enough. And look here today and the diversity and, and just to all those represented. So my heartfelt congratulations on, on everything. When I was asked to speak, and I'll, I'll keep it short, uh, I was, three words came to mind almost immediately. Maybe a challenge, maybe a focus, but I'd like to share with you just three words, and maybe you'll even remember these in years to come because, you know, it's like a three-point sermon, message, lesson plan, three points. The first one, and I'll add some scripture to this since because my faith in Christ is very close to my heart. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says, Always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances, for that is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Be thankful, have gratitude. The first word with G is gratitude. I bet you today as you uh, think back home, you think of here uh, in Fredericton, you think of those gathered today, there are many people that you would uh, say thank you to. How did we get here? It's because of the, the support of others. And I often think of my, my dad, who was an, an academic for his lifetime, in the mornings would get up, a very quiet man, he'd get on his knees and he would pray for his family, I can recall that. And, I, and as he was a science educator, a chemist, he, he would look around and say, uh, he'd say, Willie, as I was called in those days, look at creation. There is a God who cares and loves you. And my mom, I don't know if you're, uh, when you think of someone in your family, who do you go to when you have a problem? Do you call your mom? Okay, this must be universal, right? We go to mom. I remember calling my mom. When anything went wrong, I'd call my mom, my confidant. She would talk to me, and she would say, Challenges are only momentary. They'll fade away. There's always a way through this. Don't give up. You can do anything. Nothing is impossible, that kind of belief. And that was amazing because it gave me hope during those difficult times. So today, I encourage you, when you think of the past leading up, to say thank you, give gratitude. And you know, I'm a positive psychologist by, uh, I'm a clinical psychologist, but positive psychology has been my area. So from an academic standpoint, theoretical standpoint, it's good for our health to express gratitude to others. You got it? Gratitude. I'll be looking at you all as you leave for these three words, okay? Be like a final test of Crandall. G for gratitude. The second word is the word grace. And uh, I often think of the scripture that says, as you are forgiven, forgive others. In other words, move with compassion. And uh, 
Not too long ago, actually, I just retired from UNB in August, but uh, probably going back four or five years ago, I was given an extra portfolio. I was in charge of uh, uh, the, the full psych program uh, within the education faculty, and including both exceptionalities and counseling. And um, I replaced someone that was a, a major lead, and they were gone for about a two-year period. And, and as I get in there, like anything, I changed everything up made new decisions, and took new directions, kind of excited. And then the person came back, and they said, what did you do to my program? That was kind of the sense, you know, because I'd taken on new directions. I thought they were all good. And, and this person said, we need to go for coffee. And I was kind of uh, uh, dreading going for coffee because I wasn't sure what the response would be. And uh, when I went for coffee, this person said, you know, you occupied leadership for the two years there in my program, and now I'm back. And I am changing a few things back. But I want to tell you this, is that um, I will always have your back. I will never say anything about you that could be, that would diminish or hurt you. I want you to know that I have your back. I may not always see the world the same way, but um, I'm there. And that was amazing. It was like a burden had been lifted. And when we receive forgiveness, when relationships are restored, I'll tell you, it's like a burden being lifted. So I encourage you, as you live every day, gratitude for the past and the present, but as you live, live with grace. Restore relationships. Don't let chasms between people and maybe even between our faith with God, don't, don't leave that, but attend to it. Restore relationships. Live with grace. Third word is generosity. It's interesting, guys. I was just, um, I guess one, one scripture that came to mind, I thought it was kind of uh, interesting. Proverbs 11, 24, 25 says, Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. I'll tell you, being generous restores within us positive emotion. It gives us well-being when we give to others, especially when people can't always give us in return. In other words, it's not the principle, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. It's a principle of giving because we are called to be people of blessing. We are called to make a difference in our countries, in our communities, in our families, uh, internationally. You know, one thing I'm certain of, and I don't know if it, what it is, but in Ecclesiastes it says within every person there's this sense of eternity. And Jeremiah tells us that uh, uh, God says, I have plans for you. And uh, if you go to the psychology, you hear the word synchronicity, which Jung uh, coined, which talks about uh, meaningful events that happen. Well, I don't think things happen by chance. I believe that we do have a destiny. I do believe that we are given plans. And I do believe we are called to make a difference in the lives of others. Um, 2005, four or five, um, I was in the Ukraine. And I remember being there for, for several weeks, and, and um, I felt while I was there, I, I, I wanted to make a difference, but um, I was there on a, a Canadian Development Agency grant, and I, I felt like I didn't do a thing um, at that time. And then, of course, when things broke out, the war broke out, it was, uh, it was difficult. I thought about uh, Kiev or Kiev as I knew it, and I thought about wanting to make a difference, and I prayed. And... Um, the next day, uh, we have an international student in our interdisciplinary program at UNB who is from the Ukraine, um, a gal originally from, and her family from uh, Nigeria who are uh, uh, students wanting to come to Canada. And, um, and the next day, I had a call from a prof, uh, her prof saying, would you come on Zoom to discuss um, plans, things that she could do, and if there would be a community in Fredericton that would receive her? And uh, I thank God because the day before it was, Lord, I really would like to do something. And I thought about Ukraine when I was there. And the next day, it comes up. There are going to be situations and experiences where people are placed in your pathway. And no one else is going to be given the calling to be generous but you. You will be in the right place at the right time. And my prayer is that you will do the right thing. You will be generous with all of your experience, your resources. And it won't be just one day, but it will be a journey uh, with that person, with that family, with someone else. And maybe it'll just be to change one life of an individual because you've had opportunity. 
and maybe it actually will change uh, a community, maybe a province, maybe a territory, maybe a state, maybe a country. So God bless you as you move forward. Um, express gratitude, live with grace, and be generous in all your ways, and look to him for your future. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Dr. Morrison, uh, for sharing with us today. Well, Mr. Chancellor, I must have been given a wrong program here because it says I'm just supposed to close in prayer. The ceremony's done. <laughs> no, just, just joking. Today we are at the, 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 I guess, the most significant point for all of you who are in the first eight or nine rows. You started a journey with us. Uh, most of you a year or more uh, ago, and today we celebrate with you. So on behalf of the faculty, some of whom are gathered with me on the stage, the academic office, and all of the employees at Crandall, uh, we want to say congratulations and well done. So Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, and Vice Chancellor, members of the provincial and local governments, distinguished guests, members of the University Senate by whose authority we confer these academic credentials, members of the academic faculty, staff, and of course, our graduates. It is my pleasure to present our graduates who have successfully completed the prescribed courses of study for the respective degrees and certificates. The names of all graduates shall be called, and those who are um, the names of those graduates whose degrees and certificates are presented in absentia will be called at the very end of the conferral of the degrees. So let's get going. I welcome those members of the platform who are going to participate and assist the chancellor uh, to assume their places as the first graduates come forward. Mr. Chancellor, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the individuals who have successfully completed the requirements of the degree for Master of Education. Thomas Cormier. <clears throat> Rebecca Wilson. Mr. Chancellor, it also gives me great pleasure to present to you the individuals who have successfully completed the requirements for the degree of Master of Management. Eridana. Rupali. <laughs> Jerry Abraham. <laughs> Kieran Matthews Abraham. Rennie Puthan Parambil Abraham. <clears throat> Esther Agmamuche. Hari Haran Babu. <clears throat> 
Febemol Babi. Amita Bala. Ver Sherad by Beda. Anish Bhuvanandran. Shahela Actor Shanandi. <laughs> Farnaz Cheharazi. <laughs> Monica Chowdhury. Dina Al Shafi <laughs> Nada Farshidvar <laughs> Bamidele Edola Fausat. Leandro Emmanuel Garcia Velasilos. <laughs> Robin George. <laughs> Sima Gupta. Faisal Hatnat. Tanvir Hussain. Livin Jose. <clears throat> Sharon Jos <laughs> Rokshita Kapoor M.D. Naeem Hassan Khan. <laughs> Sanup Krishnan. <laughs> M. 
Leben Liston. Adrian Ernesto Lazara Paraza. Anib Mohammed Marathi Parembiu. Marin Martin. Akshit Kumar Mathur. Rashida Mohammad. Siddhartha Reddy Nagashiti. Tai Tam Noyet Nguyen. Abiyanoju Okuwagu. Ola Sanombuo, Ola Wesamisi, Ola Lajibu. Prince Panu. Nathan Raj. Shajol Susan Raj. Ruvin Kumar Rakolia. Sweda Ravish Shankar. <laughs> Ali Riaz. <laughs> Emmergreen Judy Rodriguez. Siona Mary Samkudi. Here in Kumar Lalibai Sanghani. Milan Ramashabai Savani. <laughs> Navneet Segal.
Tabassum Altav Shaikh. George Shaji. Sridhar V. Shanbag. Abni Paragabai Sheth. Simranjit Singh. Sartek Soitra. Matthew Seho Thomas. <laughs> Dax Trevedi. <laughs> Gitaban Bavinkumar Valadoreria. Karnika Verma. <laughs> Shivam Verma. <laughs> Vishnu Vijaya Kumar. Jitin Payanat Viajan. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the individuals who have successfully completed the requirements for the degree Master of Organizational Management. Kirthi Kumar Aviula. Ola Basola Olorante Akenteo. <laughs> These are my students. <laughs> Olafunke Abiola Akarede. Sandra Patricia Carakes Tafur. Fan Fam Fu Shwak Chuang. <laughs> Edijwe Christopher Emacheta. <laughs> J. 
Jethan Hari. Ayush Langer. Uhiz Farida Latawala. Archani Davi Lolakpuri. Aaron Mabels. Ogana Adora Nuanko. J. Kumar Rajesh Kumar Panchal. <laughs> Renato Mario Belazeros Saldana. Lin Shen. <laughs> Balvinder Singh, Yujwal Singh, Sudan. Jazlin Kaur Sura. <laughs> Natasha Van Logerenberg. Mr. Chancellor, we're going to change gears. It gives me great pleasure to present to you the individuals who have successfully completed the degree requirements for Bachelor of Arts. Natasha Lynn Irene Curry. <laughs> Sabir Suk Hira. Nicholas Smart. We are finished, Jolene. Okay. Mr. Chancellor, I have a number of names of people who are graduated in absentia, and I will read those now before we confer all of the degrees. Master of Education, Jody Scott Mann, Benjamin Trail, Master of Management, Mathi Priya Baskran, Ravi Kishore Dazeri, Rania El Bekuri, Aman Gathania, Shubham Kalra,
Sujad Kusvari Kia. Sukmit Singh Kariya. And Shuman Lal. Manakantan Madhavan Pilaya. Pranad Kumar Mehta. Ruturjas Mishra. Vibor Morbat. Aaron Gabriel Noble. Paramtej Singh Sahani. Nirav Narendabai Shah. Shintal Uptal Patak. Aditya Sharma. Iman Shirnbak. Gurpreet Singh. Gurpreet Singh. Samarth Singh. Now for the organizational, Master of Organizational Management, Ashley Arsino, Sloan Gillis, Ying Liu, Abki Farooq Mir, Edeninke Amoled Aquana Anake. For the Bachelor of Education, Tyler Maine, Chloe Edwards, Joni Pollock. For the Bachelor of Arts, in fact, that was Joni Pollock for the Bachelor of Arts. Veronica Roy, the Bachelor of Business Administration, Fahad Afana, and the Certificate in Teaching English as a Foreign Language, Ruth Patricia Murray, and Certificate in Teaching English as a Second Language, Christopher McCready. Mr. Ch Mr. Chancellor, I now welcome you to address the graduands and bestow their credentials. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, and uh, on a personal note, may I just say on behalf of my wife, Faye, and myself, uh, how proud we are of all of you, and a hearty congratulations, uh, and all the best in your future as well. By the calling of our mission, and by the authority of Provincial Charter, and of the Senate of the University, it is my great pleasure to admit you to the respective degrees, certificates, ranks, and titles of Master of Education, Master of Management, Master of Organizational Management, Bachelor of Education, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Business Administration, Certificate in Teaching English as a Foreign Language, and Certificate in Teaching English as a Second Language. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the fall 2022 graduates of Crandall University. Mr. Chancellor, today we have the honor of giving a Convocation Award. It's the Graduate Studies Award in Management, and I'll invite our former dean and still faculty member, Dr. Danny Brown, uh, to take his position. You can read a little bit of the information about the award in your program, but our award looks for contributions in three and four different areas. 
uh, a contribution or demonstration in leadership skills, uh, in the contribution to the actual cohort or section that the student was a part of, uh, a contribution to Crandall University, and a contribution to the community outside of Crandall within our uh, city and province. And so this fall's Convocation Award for the Graduate Studies in Management goes to Lin Shen. Come on up, Lin. Congratulations again to each one who crossed the stage this morning and to those who are absent. It's a special day and we're really proud of you and uh, we're glad for, glad for you to have reached this milestone today. We're about to land our plane and uh, conclude our ceremony, uh, but before we do that, I'd just like to take just a moment as I do with each convocation to give you a few updated items that I think that you, you might be interested in. We have lots of reasons to celebrate at Crandall these days. Uh, one is uh, another year of record enrollment. Over 1,200 students are studying at Crandall this year. Uh, virtually all of our programs and all of our classes were completely full in terms of new students entering. Campus housing is at full capacity. This summer, we renovated our dining room and our kitchen, which we're quite proud of. We built two new student lounges. Uh, over the summer months as well, we moved our Writing and Student Success Center to the top floor of Stultz Hall to allow for a future library expansion, which we look forward to perhaps this summer. We moved our bookstore up to the top floor of Stultz to create a new office suite to house our growing number of faculty and staff. In fact, this past summer, we created 21 brand new positions on faculty and staff to serve our growing student body. We're pleased to have welcomed over the last five years uh, students from more than 50 countries around the world. And I'm sure you notice as you came in the Great Hall or walked along at uh, flags representing the countries from which students at Crandall have come. We've added scholarships and bursaries, racial and ethnic diversity has grown, and we've celebrated many victories in sports. Uh, we've sent our, our boxers to Turkey and many other countries around the world. We have a number of Olympic hopefuls who are here boxing. Uh, we hosted uh, a group from the US Military Academy at West Point, New York, three weeks ago for a boxing tournament in our gym. And we won half the boats, and it was a great night. Many other areas of celebration. I think about our cross-country team, who for the second year in a row won the conference finals and are off to nationals, and many of our other teams that are doing so well. So we're grateful for you having been here. We're grateful that you've been here as students at a great time in the life of Crandall. Thank you for our con your contribution to our community. And thank you to your parents and friends who have supported you in this journey. Uh, we're grateful to all of you. I'm going to invite now our Vice President for Advancement, Dr. Robert Knowles, to come to close uh, this time with prayer. And then there's a concluding song I'm going to invite you to stand for as we recess. Following that, there's a reception hosted by the Chancellor uh, adjacent to us in uh, Stultz Hall, and you're all welcome to come for a snack and to take some pictures with your faculty members or with the Chancellor, as you would like. As we conclude this morning, let us join in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the uh, occasion which has brought us together today. We celebrate the history of this institution through the years, many people who have graduated and moved on 
and made a difference in their world, and today will be no different as we release these graduates into a world of service and of impact. I pray that you will uh, guide and bless each one, continue to grant them wisdom as they interact with one another and to apply the things which they have heard in the address today. We thank you for each one who has made this their home for the last few years. And now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let us uh, join together in the singing of the university hymn. Let us stand, please. Thank you. 